Okay, so for the stripes, we're still using that black plum color, the same color that we did the shading with, but you're gonna use a liner, or definitely, I'm using my script liner. There's lots of different size liners. This is 10 slash zero. Um, it's just my best liner that I have at the moment because they get scraggly looking. So when you do line, do line work, you need to make the paint like ink. You want to mix a nice amount of water, not too much because you don't want it to be a wash like mostly water, but you want it to be the consistency of ink pretty much. Um, I'm just keep going to my water bucket and adding a little more water until I think it's a nice, you want it to flow right off there like ink off a pen. And I'm just going to eyeball, he's got two stripes on each side of his shoulders here. And I'm just sticking my brush kind of there and I'm pushing down. Hopefully it didn't make it. Hopefully it'll make it to the end. If your paint is wet enough and you've loaded it correctly, you should have enough to make this little stripe. And then I'm going to take the other one and I'm evenly eyeballing the top part and the bottom part so that they kind of come spaced. But you could absolutely trace these lines on. They're on the tracing. She has them there for you so you can trace them on if you don't feel comfortable eyeballing. So I'm just going to put my brush down here and push down. Let the brush do the work. And as I push down, it kind of got wider too, and I like that look. So that's what I'm going for. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, and we're going to use um, our stylus. I have a stylus. You know what? You can actually use the end of your brush a lot of times this to make dip dots, and that's what's on his cap. But I'm going to leave that until I'm not going to be around the piece for a while because I end up sticking my hand in dip dots all the time before they're dry and it's a pain in the butt because you want them to be nice and kind of dimensional and it, it's hard to fix them you really have to start from scratch again when you do a dip dot and I guess I could take that around the bottom but I'm not going to be that picky alright so he has his stripes and then like I said there would be dip dots on his hat and then they're done those sections are done the next little part is to shade all the checks on here. We're going to do a lot of shading on the checks. And the camel checks, it says it right here on the, and you can get this pattern, like I said, at Renee Mullins site, plumperdy.com. You can print this out for yourself and have this to play with. Um, so it says here on the coat, uh, the checks. Base the green check celery and shade along the sides and bottom with avocado. So I'm grabbing some avocado paint shake it up make sure it's mixed put a little bit just a little I really only put a little at a time because it dries out when it's on your palette and we're side loading again we're gonna float these on and it said the bottom and sides so I'm gonna turn my piece all the green checks I'm loading my brush I went into my water grab a little bit of green come over to the paper palette put it down work it into the bristles. I'm using the littler brush, the 3 8 inch angle. Come back over to my piece. Let me go down a little bit. And I'm going to do all the bottoms first. The bottom would be, I'm thinking, you know, facing toward the bottom of the piece, obviously. And I went, I'm going right back to that, uh, to my paper palette and picked up more paint from where I had already blended my brush and see this that's what I'm saying when I use my big brush I can go I could probably have done that whole thing without reloading and that's why I like that brush because it holds so much water and paint well I actually leave the paint on the palette so I can come back and get more paint but I have plenty of water in my brush so I don't have to keep going into the water bucket I hope I'm not repeating myself too much, but that is truly, it's a great tip, honestly. Like, it's such a time saver to not have to keep reloading every float, you know. You don't have to do that. I have paint on the palette. I put the paint down. 
on the palette over here and I leave it there and then I just go get some more and as long as I have water in my brush it'll slick along it'll go I'm getting a little dry now but I'll re I'll wet my brush in a second I'll show you what I mean when I reload I'll show you so look look how that's given that dimension already I still have a couple more to do but I'm gonna reload so I come over here I go in my water bucket and blot. Then I pick up that little corner of paint, just a little, but I put it down. I put it down on the palettes and I walk away from it. I left a lot of paint there, you see that? And if I need more, I slide back into it and get it, you know? But I have to have water, so I make sure there's enough water. And if I need that paint, I'm going to go back and get it. So now it's on there, it's mixed with water. I'm going to do this one. We didn't get to him yet. Flip it around and I didn't get to him. And this little section by his mustache. We can always sharpen up the mustache after, and I tried to already. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just going to put the paint right in that little corner because it would be dark in there. It's very shaded in there. Now we got to do each side of the checks, and these are dry enough for me to come back now, and I'm going to do the left side of all the checks. Then you come back and you do the right side of all the checks. So, I mean, the, the more efficient you can be, you know, if you're not loading your brush every single time, what, well, you know, oh, well, my husband's home. So you just go, hey, I'm filming. Okay. I'm filming. It's okay, babe. And then I'm doing all my top checks first. And you know what? She doesn't have you highlighting these, which I thought was kind of weird because generally there is a shade and a highlight on everything. But um, it doesn't have to. I mean, because the, the base color would then be what's highlighting it, you know? So it's fine. And now I'm going to go, um, I didn't do the bottom ones yet, so I'm doing the other side of the bottom ones. So you get the idea. We have to do three sides of each of these checks, and then we're going to do the, um, the brown checks, too. The camel checks are going to be shaded as well. But it really adds to, dim to the dimension and the... And the um, you know, so wait, I'm going to finish my green and I'll come back and we'll start doing the brown and I'll show you how cool that looks and then we'll be able to do a space. All right, you guys, I'll be back. Okay, I finished the green. There is a direction that says to darken. It says um, shade with avocado. Deepen the shading in the same areas with celery green and a brush mix of avocado and black green. So... I'm not going to do that, and I didn't do it on my first one, and I think it looks perfectly fine. I like it. I'm leaving it. It's just an extra step that, you know, a beginner's got enough to do without that. Now, the camel color um, checks are shaded with, um, what color is that? Milk chocolate? I just had it. <laughs> my um, Christmas music. Honey brown. Where did I just put it, though? Oh, honey brown. Make sure you shake it up. I went and found a half-inch low Cornell shade, um, shader, angle shader. I don't like it. Look how it's splitting. I don't like that. I mean, I'm trying to get it loaded with water. I'm putting a lot of water in it. Then I blot. It's staying together. I'm going to load with that, um, the brown, and I'm going to... Load my brush and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to go along the um, the left side of the of the brown checks first. I don't know. I I think it's just because it's stubbier. It doesn't hold as much water in because I put a lot of paint in my brush. It gets sticky faster. Like and I guess the bristles can't really stay together if it's the moisture isn't like holding them together it's staying pretty good right now so I'm hoping for the best but this is a half inch I'm gonna go get a couple new brushes um, since I've been painting lately 
Um, oh, see, it just split on me. I, I went and got more paint, but I didn't get more water. Maybe you have to just reload it more often with paint, with um, water, water. See that splitting? I don't like it. I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to my, my go-to. And you know what, maybe I should just get a smaller um, American Painter. Like this is the th uh, 5 eighths. I think I'll get a half inch American Painter and see how that works for me. I think I have one, but it was really, I had already, it was used up. Let me see if I, I'll look for another one when I take my next break and sit, because I have brushes everywhere. <laughs> All right, so I'm just doing the same thing, getting a little bit on my brush, loading it into my brush, and we just did all the, we're doing the left sides of the brown checks. So I'm going to continue to do that. All the bristles on the surface, not just the color, you need the water too to get that graduation. So make sure it's, it's you know, you want to maybe just lift up the edge of the brush to just have the paint, but you need the water too, and stick it in that little corner too, underneath the mustache. All right, so we did all the left sides. Now I'm going to do the right sides, but I think I should wait till that dries a little bit. What else did I want to tell you? If you haven't, you can trace your face on, because I think we'll do his face next. Um, you know what we should do? We should do the um, the beard. We'll do the beard first, then the face. Let me see how what order she has it in. She has doing the face. She has doing the hair because we're going to put, after we're done this checkered area, we can pull our little, I'll show you on mine. You have to be done with that before you pull these little hairs up over the edge. So that's why she wants you to finish this and then do the face. But we could do our, um, the hair because that's a big area. I just want to let that dry. And it might be the same color. Um, shade with, oh, sable brown. I don't know why. Art, here's my sable brown. So I'm going to get some of that out. I'm just moving. I like to move around the piece. You don't have to stay in one section. While something else is drying, you can kind of move around. And I'm definitely using my big brush for this. Oh, Kirby just came in. Let's see, four minutes. Be right back. Okay, so I'm going to side load my brush with Sable Brown. The way I've been doing all the shading, it's the same thing. Putting plenty of paint on my brush. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to go um, along the bottom edge. So I, I even did it on this one. You, you can see it in that along this side and this side. And then underneath his mustache. But I'm going to do the bottom first. So I'm just going to put my paint along this bottom edge. I have a lot of paint. And pull it across. And look how dark it is. Is that not good? I like it though. I don't tend to mind. So I'm going to, I'll mop it out a little. See if I can soften it. There we go. That's good. Um, let that dry because if you stick your brush in it while it's wet, you're going to pull it off. So this part right here would get pulled off. So I'll come, we'll go up to the top area where we won't get in that. Along his, um, mustache you need the shade so we're gonna I just threw my brush in the water because I was panicking because that was too dark um so I'm gonna reload I went into my water I blot grab some paint and load it on my brush and this should go all the way across just fine the only thing is I'm gonna go I'm gonna be tipping my so I'm gonna start here Try to stay along that line and kind of just bump up to the lip. I'm going to leave it there. Pull it, pull it up to the lip. And then I'm going to mop because when I use this big brush, look how much color I get. I mean, it gets dark, but I like it. I mean, it definitely... Help me a second. What? Kirby's got something tangled in her hair. All right, I'll be back. All right, she's okay. She had a like piece of a rose bush or something, like a very thorny branch in her ear hair. <laughs> 
Anywho, she's rescued, so I'm going to do that to the other side of the mustache. I'll try not to put as much color on my brush, but it's super hard for me. Super hard. All right, I just got to get over this a little so I can see where I'm going. And as long as you have that paint edge where you want it, your line will be nice and straight. See? That side's way darker. It's all right. I'm leaving it. Now we can come back and do this other side because this is dry enough. And I'll try to load it up with a lot of paint to match the amount of paint I used on the other side. And I'm going to start on this side. Pull it all the way down. Smooth it out. But see, I had a lot of water on there. And if I just take this mop brush and gently pull at the edge of the water, and then I kind of pat into the paint too. But that just kind of calms it down because I do put a lot of paint. But it still looks, doesn't it? Does it still look? Yeah, it looks good. All right, good. Very dark, but good. I don't mind it that dark. I think we could go under the lip, but I think he's fine. His lip, I sh I'm going to do it not as dark under his lip, and I'm going to go with my smaller brush to do the, um, this is another half inch low Cornell. It's got a clear um, handle, so I'm going to try that one. <laughs> See what happens with this one. Sometimes it is, it's just trial and error. You have to find the right tools that work for you. That seems to be holding together pretty good. And I'm going to go up above his mustache this time. Look, it's sitting split on me. You just want to get the right angle. Put that paint down and pull it across where you want it. That seems good. I don't know. This These brushes, it's like it does... Each one does diff something different. It's just weird. This is splitting. See it's splitting? I don't like that. Don't like when it splits. My hairs are falling out. All right, so that's that. I don't really like the shape of this. It looks like it comes down, so I'm gonna take my Q-tip. And while it's still not quite dry. I fixed that a little. I just like that swoopy angle better. There's probably a little bit at the top too. She doesn't have it up there. Did I do it? I didn't. So we're good up here on this part of the shading, like up here, because his face will be shaded. Um, yeah, I did go under the lip. Um, Alrighty then. I think we can start doing his little face and give him some features. Um, I'm going to go under his lip real quick. I'm just going to grab the smaller brush again. Well, by smaller I mean just not my jumbo. And put a little under his lip. And this is going to like, I'm going to swoop it in so I put the color down this way. And go all the way around up to this side. Like, see how I'm pivoting my brush? Because that way you pull the color and the water around with you. You don't, you know, and then it looks connected. So that's that. I think it gets highlighted down here and here, if at all. I don't, I think I did. No, no, she does. She does with white because this is buttermilk. So white will show up. We definitely do on the top of his mustache. Oh, she has it. His mustache is shaded, I think, under his nose. Did I do that? Yeah, if you look at mine, you can see how it's a little shaded just like right here. And then the highlight, you see the white up against the bottom of the mustache, and then there's white on both sides. And that's it. So that's good. I want to darken this a little bit. This little sideburns place right here. See, sometimes now it start, I start to get a little nitpicky where I just want it to be how I want it to be. And I'm not worried about 
I just want that darker because that's how I like it. All right, I like that better. I don't know, I still have a gap there, but I think I can fix it. All right, so that's that. Did we ever finish? We never finished our brown checks. So just as a reminder, I'll go do it off camera and we'll start the face now. But what we were doing was shading on three sides. So side, bottom, side, side, bottom, side. I only did the left side of all of them, but I'll do that off camera. I'll finish that up and then that's done. But before we put our hair on, finish that. But we'll go ahead and start the face real quick. So for the face, she has us basing with flesh tone. And you know what I used? I Here's flesh tone. I used flesh tan on my other one. I grabbed flesh tan. And it's a big difference. Like this is way peachier. That's more skin color, you know. This is just like a tan color. So this is what I based my other face with. Wrong. But anyway, so I based it with that. And then we're going to shade his face with Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna is right here. And it's kind of, I like this for hair and stuff. It's kind of like a reddish brown. So that's what she has us shading the face with. And I'm going to really try and be soft with this. I want to try and, excuse me, keep my, my glasses much softer this time. And I'm going to really try and not just totally darken his face with this. And then he has cheeks too. So it says, um, where is it? Sorry. For his face. So shade the top of the forehead down the sides of the nose with burnt sienna. All right, so you know what I'm going to do? Should I erase some? Um, I'm going to just try and lighten up this tracing line so it's not too dark. I can still see it, but it's not like really dark. Perfect. All right, and then actually I'm going to do the eyebrow line too because the eyebrows, that's just the direction I want to go with the eyebrows. I actually drew that on myself. The tracing has it more like, um, did I put that on? Like this. This is how the tracing has it. Can you see? I'll leave it like that. They're just wispy hairs. But all I did, because I'm going to freehand that, I just drew a line that kind of shows me the direction they go in. And then I'll freehand the... Um, the lines. Okay, so see, I definitely lightened that up. Oh, she has shading on her mustache. I see that. She has a line going down the middle. I didn't do that on mine at all. I think I will for this one. Um, but for now, we're going to shade our little face with burnt sienna. Did I put some out? Yeah. We're going to, I'm going to try it with my littler brush. Definitely for down the side of the nose. I'm using, this is my 5 8 inch, I'm sorry, 3 8 inch angle and I'm getting some burnt sienna on there. And I'm going to walk away from the color, try not to get it too colorful. And I like to go from bottom to top. Actually, you can take this right into his eyeball because we're going to paint them black and it's a perfect way to hide the end. So I'm putting it in the corner, coming around that nostril up and right into the eye and leaving it there. I'm going to just push that away so there's not that harsh line and soften it a little. But see how I left that line right in his eye? It doesn't matter because that's going to be painted. He's going to have cheeks and everything. So I'm flipping my piece because I want to be able to do the same thing down this side of his face. <clears throat> I'm going to reload. I want to make sure I get the same consistency. So I just blotted. I'm grabbing it. I am loading my brush. I don't want to have too much here. I don't want this. This should just be subtle. And again, I'm starting at the end of his nostril and coming up around. I'm going to pull the color right up into his eye and stop. And just get that hard edge away and soften. So this side has like a weird thing happening here. I'm just going to take that off. I don't know why it's weird. All right, so now you can see his nose. Okay, so I guess that was 10 minutes. I'm just going to take and go up under his nostril here. 
gently, not real dark, and stop in the middle and kind of make it a line that comes down the middle. Does that look middle-ish? Yeah. See, I didn't do this on my first one, but she's got a line on hers, and maybe I won't put it <coughs> coming down, but I'll just uh, go under this nostril and leave it. I'm not going to um, go down the side. Just leave it like that. So now he's shaded. His whole, all of his hair is shaded. The other direction on here is to do your pom-pom. And I basically this, on the original one, I stroked it in. First you're going to stroke it in with, um, it's two layers. White is the second layer, and what's the first layer? Paint the first layer with sand. So I probably used like buttermilk or something. I don't. I didn't have sand. Um, and then you do the white, and you can't even really tell now because I've stickled it and everything. But for this one, I'm gonna put the snow text. I'm gonna put this on here. So at the end, I'm gonna do that and let that dry. Um, so I'm not going to do that, but I've gone around all my hair and I've shaded all that. <clears throat> we started to shade his face. I still need to do, we're going to highlight the hair in a minute, but the first thing, I just wanted to finish shading the face with, um, what color was that? So for his face, <clears throat> it said to shade the forehead. That's what we have to do still. And down the sides of the nose with burnt sienna. So I'm going to go um, across his forehead now. I'm not going to use the big brush because... Like I said, I'm trying to keep it lighter than my first one, but um, taking this three inch with the burnt sienna, and I'm gonna go like across his forehead. So like from about here over. And I'll probably think this is way too light because it's so small. I'm going back because I just am. All right, let's see what it looks like. While it's wet, it's hard to judge. But you want some color up there because when we add his eyebrows, he has these big funky eyebrows. I call them Dr. Green eyebrows. When I was a kid, I had this pediatrician. His eyebrows were hilarious. They were just like these long, scraggly, oh my God. Why do men keep them like that? Ugh, I'll never forget them. Dr. Green's eyebrows. Okay, so see, I mean, his face is shaded. That's all we're really going to do. Now we're going to float his cheeks and around the end of his nose and the bottom of his lip with red iron oxide. So I'm going to get out some of that and show you how that looks. And it's pretty. And then we're going to brighten it up with, um, I think it's oh, country red. So I'm going to stick with my 3 8 or whatever it is. Yep. I just don't want to overdo. I don't want it to be too bright. Corner side load my brush into the red iron oxide and give him some cheeks. And what I'm going to do here, oh, I got a blop of water there, is um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to kind of go up a little bit. So I'm going to start, let's see. <sighs> Renee, what did you do? I wish I knew what Renee did. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go down here like this and go over. So it's not, it's kind of big. You know, it's not just a little bit. That's plenty. That's cute. I'm going to leave it. I'm not even going to mop it. I'm going to leave it and see what it looks like. Do the other side. Corner load into that red iron oxide. Load my brush. And again, I'm kind of starting over here and going like a swoop around towards the nose. So let's see if I do it. I'm going down across the mustache and over. Kind of tuck it in there. Is that what I did on the other side? I don't like that. That looks good, but I think I probably should have gone this way and left it up higher. Yeah, pull it up higher. That's what I did. I couldn't get the perspective of which way I wanted to go. But he definitely has rosy cheeks. Oh, 
My battery's blinking. These batteries suck. Do I have any more? I think I'm on my last battery. I mean, this one might be. I'll try this one. I don't remember if it's not or good or not. We have to do it on the bottom of his nose. So if it turns off, I'll just come back. I'll listen for it to click. But the, again, the red iron oxide, I'm not going to try and have too much on my brush. I just want to get this little tip of his... There it went. Nope. Still recording. Right here. This A lot of this will be covered up by his glasses and stuff, so that's good. And then his bottom lip. The red iron oxide again. And we're going to brighten it up with that country red, too. It looks so pretty. Oh, I don't know if her directions say it. I've made two of them, and I haven't seen it yet. But I based that little triangle there with red iron oxide, too. This little part here, his inside his mouth, I made red iron oxide. So I just darkened that up. But he's going to have eyes in a minute. Let's see. Let's see if it wants us to put eyes. Um... I just put a lot of paint there. Kind of seeped out onto his lip. I don't know why I did that. Why did I do that? I will fix it. All right, so then we have to highlight our hair. So we're going to use white, straight white. And she says titanium white, but I'm just using white. I mean, white is white. I guess there are different brightnesses or something, but... Compared to these on my palette, this will be nice and bright. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use the 3 8 inch sky. And go into white. And pull it right up this little side here. Brighten that up. Try to stay out of this shading, the little corner part, but it's okay if you get up in there. And right here, things are beeping outside. I don't know what that is. Take my mop and just pull it out of the shaded area. But that added a little brightness to that. And then I'm going to go on his mustache along the bottom edge. And that's it. So I'll probably just swoop this in here if it cuts away. But I'm almost at 10 minutes, so it's 8 minutes. So I'm putting it right here. On the bottom edge of his mustache. All the way up to the little tips as best I can. And the other side. Again, just kind of swoop along the bottom tuck it up into this edge here cute 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 now we can highlight we can put our hairs on but let's finish the face we gotta finish the face first um, I just want to float that red iron oxide on his lip again I don't know I just feel like I took some off much darker. See how dark mine is though? I just, I'm a heavy hand. Like if you look at the picture, hers is so soft and it's just softer. Okay, so the hair, the only thing we have to do on the hair is make these little, I think we could probably do that since we have the white out. All we're doing is um, the cheeks. Yeah, let's finish our cheeks and then we'll come. So I need the cherry red, or I'm sorry, I keep wanting to call it cherry. Country red. And we're going to brighten up those cheeks just a little. Now this time, I'll try to just keep it in the corners more. I won't come up as far. I'm just going to try and keep the color, you know, so that you can see both colors. And I'll try to just go along the very edge of his nose and along the bottom, very bottom of his lip. And that gives that, like, dimension of color, the pink to the darker red. Um, and then we can add his eyes. But we'll be ready to add the white hairs when I do that. All right, I'll be right back. 